What's going on, Hobby family? Today, I have an extra special treat for all of you, as we are going to be painting the brand new Dexessa for Age of Sigmar's Hedonites of Slanesh. Ever since I was introduced to Warhammer, out of the four Chaos Gods, Slanesh has been my absolute favorite. I love how Slanesh and its worshippers does everything to the absolute excess, including the pursuit of perfection. I'm also a gigantic fan of how they play on the battlefield. From advancing forward, being everywhere on the tabletop, and absolute lethal killers in combat. Now I've been getting a ton of requests ever since I introduced my Slanesh army in both 40k and Age of Sigmar on Mini Wargaming on how to paint my particular color scheme. I drew inspiration from this piece of artwork from Warhammer Community. The image is extremely evocative, but I also love how there's a hint of mystery involved as well. So with a rough guide in mind, I took some of those colors and created my own color scheme. And with the new introduction of Dexessa and Senessa for the Hedonites of Slanesh for Age of Sigmar, I thought now would be the perfect opportunity to create a guide on how to paint Slanesh. Now, at some point during the video, I would normally ask you to click the like button, hit subscribe, and join my Patreon. But today, we're not gonna do that. Like every video, it doesn't need to have me asking you to subscribe. <laughs> but do make sure to stick around to the end of the video because I have a really cool announcement with this miniature. So let's get right into it. Dexessa, the Talon of Slanesh. With the model built, we can start applying some paint. I'll be leaving the model in a few sub-assemblies so I can work more easily with each piece. After the model has been primed, I'm applying a zenithal highlight to the main body and inner wings. Is that what it's called? You know, like that membrane thing that killed Dennis from Jurassic Park? I wonder if Dexessa spits too. Now while I've got off-white in my airbrush, I'm going to grab the two outer cloaks and proceed to paint them white. If you'd like to see a more detailed way of how I paint white, check out the upper right hand corner. We can finally start painting the skin. I begin by giving the body and wings a base coat of orcish dermis by scale color. Now 
Now for our first highlight, we're going to use Ishtar Pink and apply it as a Zenithal highlight. For the wings, we're going to apply it as a transition and work our way down to about 60%. Our second highlight is going to consist of Resurrection Flesh, and we're going to apply it as a Zenithal again, but slowly build up a transition. We're going to repeat the previous step for the wings, but target about 30% of the upper wings. For our last Zenithal highlight of the skin, I'm going to use Harvester Flesh, and only target the uppermost raised areas. Next, we're going to spray from below Beharet Red to create a shadow transition. I'm targeting areas such as under the knees, the arms, stomach, and face. For the wings, I'm targeting the stem where the wings would connect to the back. I'm going to pour some Seraphim Sepia and target the same areas. A wash through the airbrush creates a tint, and this will help us homogenize all of our highlights and shadows. To deepen our tint, I'm going to repeat the same process, but with Carolberg Crimson. Now, if you find your shadows to be too strong, you can always re-establish your highlights with a Zenithal highlight of Harvester Flesh. a bit of character to the model. We're going to create a transition with Bloodfest Crimson and apply it to the feet right under the knee. We're going to want our wings to really stand out against our main body. So with Cassandora Yellow, I'm going to target the middle of the wings and tint our skin. For the final highlight transition of the wings, I'm going to use Lindanis Grey, which has more purple tones in it, and target 10% of the upper wing. Purple and yellow complement each other very nicely, and it will add character to our model. With our airbrushing done, we can now switch to brushwork. We're going to start with Carolberg Crimson again, thin down with water, and target only the deepest areas that would be shrouded in shadow. For the wings, we're going to target the bone structure and all of the carved recessed areas.
come back with pure harvester flesh and edge highlight all of the raised areas on the wings and apply a thin layer above the carved details. Next up, we can finally move on to the horns. We're going to mix scale color walnut with a bit of black and apply this base coat to all the horns and boned areas. This is roughly going to be a 50-50 mix. Now with a thin layer of walnut, we create a transition between our base coat and first highlight. By grabbing some Tenere Yellow, mixing it with pure walnut, we create our second highlight and work our way closer to the tip of the horns and bones. Mixing a little more yellow into our previous mix gives us our third highlight. And for our fourth and final highlight, we're going to use pure Tenere Yellow, but only on the very tips of the horned crown. For the hair, we're going to use Mephiston Red by Citadel and create our base coat. Now that we're done, let's give all the hair a wash with Nuln Oil. Once it's dry, we're going to re-establish the raised areas of the hair with Mephiston Red as our first highlight. Our second highlight will consist of Evil Sun Scarlet. We're going to target the middle strands of the hair and the very tips. Coming in with Wild Rider Red, we're going to apply our highlight in the previous step, but our highlights are now getting smaller. Last but not least, we're going to use our initial base coat layer for the skin and apply our final highlight. For the feet, I mix Bloodfest Crimson with Harvester Flesh and target only the raised areas. Moving on to the inner cloak, I add Vallejo Black Surface Primer to the previously Rattle Can primed parts. I like using this method because when the black primer is applied by hand, it creates more of a satin finish, which complements the overall feel for a Slanesh model. With Lead Belcher, I apply a thin layer on all the metallic parts, such as her staff and jewelry. I'm not looking to make this a display piece, so leaving this as is is good enough for the tabletop.
We want to have a contrast between warm and cold, so we're going to apply Dracanoff Nightshade to the staff. To emphasize the difference between warm and cold, let's apply a layer of cobalt alchemy to the Solanesh symbol. Following this, we're going to use emerald alchemy on all the raised areas. Next up, we're going to gently apply Dracanoff Nightshade through the airbrush to blend our metallics. The very last step is to paint all the gold areas. I'm going to use Vallejo Liquid Gold Old Gold to pick out jewels and her crown. I'm also going to apply it to her fingernails to make it look more like jewelry. Add a little bling to the jewels. I apply blood for the blood god to make the jewelry pop. And that's it. All we have to do now is assemble the miniature and conquer our enemies for the glory of the Dark Prince. But do you know what's better than conquering our enemies for the glory of the Dark Prince? B-roll. Thanks so much for watching everyone. I'm gonna be giving this miniature away to one of my patrons next month. So if you would like to get your hands on this miniature or future minis, please consider checking out my Patreon campaign. I'll leave a link down in the description. And a special shout out to this month's patrons. Travis, Derek Townsend, and Dinat226. Thanks so much to each and every one of you. I hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial and let me know down in the comments what you think. Till next time, hobby family, peace on the streets and make sure to 